brief history of cancer research. To begin, cancer is a mutation in an organism's DNA that causes the affected cells to dodge normal signaling of the cell cycle that control cell divisions. This photo shows a few of the things cancer cells do that is different than what a normal cell does. Some examples are that cancer cells can evade growth suppressing signals, avoid destruction from the immune system, induce angiogenesis, which is bringing more blood to these cells, along with much more. Now cancer does all of these things, but the reason it is so detrimental is because the diseased cells will grow so much that they will hinder the normal function of healthy cells. When looking under a microscope, cancer cells would look almost like spiders or aliens as you can see in the picture, while healthy cells would look like plump, round, and even circles. Now the history of cancer research first involved discovering exactly what the disease was, and one of the first medical professionals who had attempted to do so was Hippocrates, a Greek physician. He thought that cancer was an abundance of black stomach bile, but after thousands of years in 1543, Andreas Vesalius, a human anatomist, opened up a victim who died of cancer and discovered that the cause was not stomach bile. So in 1850, Rudolf Virchow, a leading pathologist of the time, discovered that cancer was actually a disease of the cells, which is what we know the disease as today. So after discovering what exactly cancer was, it was time to figure out how to treat it. In 1907, a band of 11 pathologists, surgeons, and biochemists founded the American Association for Cancer Research. The association still exists today, and they have meetings annually to exchange information on recent advancements in cancer research. Now here is a video clip that explains exactly what would be discussed during one of these annual meetings. The combinations with surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and immune therapy, and or targeted therapies. It's an embarrassing wealth of riches in terms of what to talk about, and so we really tried to make the best effort to choose what we thought was broadly of interest to the entirety of our exactly. you know, uh, attendees. One thing that they can expect is to see the latest and best cancer science that really spans the range from basic science that into investigations about how cancer develops, progression, etc., um, all the way to clinical translation, clinical trial. So a cure was obviously not found, but some profound discoveries were made, such as what a carcinogen was, aka what outside forces cause cancer. Some examples of these would be UV radiation from the sun, pesticides, or smoking. Another major discovery was made by Theodore, Theodore Boveri, which used fruit flies to research cancer genes. He claimed that cancer-causing genes were on chromosomes. These were known as oncogenes, and oncogenes can be compared to brakes on a car. They stop cell division, but a mutation in one of them can allow cells to divide uncontrollably, which leads to cancer. Dr. Sider Sanford is a researcher and professor here at ONU and has done extensive research with fruit flies. She says that Identify genes in fruit fly that are required for cell movement. You can pretty much guarantee, not completely, that it, but you can pretty much guarantee those same genes would be involved in cell movement in tumor cell metastasis in cancer. So to be involved in the type of research that Dr. Sider Sanford participates in takes extensive training and schooling. A student would have to earn an undergraduate degree, complete a capstone project, complete a master's degree, and then complete a thesis project, and then go on to a PhD program and complete a dissertation at the end of the PhD program that would go on to get published in a public scientific journal. Another interview I did was with Dr. Leslie Riley, a biology professor and researcher here at ONU, and she said in regard to choosing what you want to research, highly recommend doing other outside research experiences and or internships because like REUs, REUs um, yeah, because I think the more you do, the 
it helps to define what you want to end up doing too. And it also teaches you what you don't like to do. Yeah. So, which is an important lesson also. The last interview I did was with a senior biology major here at ONU named Rand Abdullaha. She's pictured on the left. And going along with Dr. Riley's statement about research, Rand said that after she is employed in her field, I'll be able to like, I'll have more of an opportunity to make a difference than I do right now. So as a cancer researcher, you would make a huge difference because cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States, as well as the world. A cure has not been found yet, so it is imperative to find new treatments to combat the disease. Some treatments that exist right now are radiation therapy and chemotherapy. There are many issues with these approaches though because healthy cells are affected in the process, which can lead to hair loss, vomiting, and fatigue. What has worked the best currently though is a multi-step approach that caters to the specific type of cancer and patient. Some challenges that a cancer researcher would face would be clinical trials, ethical human research, and new mutations to DNA, as well as the cost of research. But curing cancer would change the world and the human race as we know it.